if we are going to look at the availability of molecules, not many molecules have come in the recent past, especially antioxidant or uh, products. So the resistance has developed immensely and the producers are often forced to switch very frequently, not even completing one cycle, sometimes forced to switch it because of uh, the, these kind of resistances. Mm. So now, uh, even they do rotations, even they do shuttling programs, still the cost of subclinical coccidiosis is very high because it's often complicated with the secondary complication, necrotic enteritis, which is caused by clostridium. How do mycotoxins and coccidiosis affect poultry health? That's the topic we are going to discuss in this episode of Future Feed Talks. My name is Iris Hoffman, editor for Poultry World, and this series is in cooperation with TSM, Fermanich, Animal Nutrition and Health. Next to me is Dr. Jaraman Krishnarajan, and he knows all about this topic. Hello, Dr. Jane, nice to have you here. Hello, nice meeting you. Perfect. Well, to start, uh, mycotoxins act as a predisposing factor for multiple health and performance challenges. How does this play a role in the health aspect in modern production? Um, in poultry production, mycotoxin really plays a very significant role, but oftentimes it is underestimated. People will tend to look at it, uh, okay, uh, my ingredients are good, raw materials are good, and I think uh, I will not be having an issue, but uh, uh, they miss the subclinical levels of toxicosis in combinations. They end up in health hazards. Like a simple inflammation itself is enough to uh, create a, a big trouble. If there, there is an inflammation, the boards would not be in a good position to absorb the nutrients. By doing so, it would be deficient or uh, the deficiency will exhibit at the later stages. So quite good amount of uh, health challenges, not only in terms of nutrient absorption, as well as uh, uh, in poor immunity, uh, when it's going to uh, reduce the sizes of the uh, uh, immune organs like uh, spleen and all those things. Well, lymphocytes would be on down. When they are going to be down, the response to the, the diseases and especially viral diseases are on the low. So the board would not be in a good shape to respond to the disease challenges. They end up in trouble apart from the production losses, mortality, and also higher incidence susceptible to the diseases. There are good, good amount of uh, chances of uh, these things uh, in all species, broilers, breeders, and the, the commercial egg layers, even though they manifest in the different formats but uh, invariably all uh, species are getting affected and the mycotoxin plays a very important role in health aspect as well as indirectly affecting the nutrient and nutritional aspect as well as a C. coli. So we tend to look at it mostly from the point of uh, health aspects but oftentimes we miss the interlinking, uh, the C. coli or the re end result of it. What happens uh, because of those things? That's uh, playing a very major role. It's one of the key or uh, the biggest uh, trouble in uh, a modern poultry production with uh, increasing thrust to the number of ingredients when it's coming to the play, you always have to be very careful with mycotoxins. Exactly. And what can producers do to mitigate mycotoxin contamination? Producers uh, depend upon a couple of uh, strategies to overcome. One is the selection of the raw materials. Selection of raw materials, sometimes uh, even though they given uh, a strict uh, legislation like trying to look at it, uh, the levels and uh, do the get into the system. But sometimes when there are more than one mycotoxins present, uh, that cre which creates a synergistic effect, sometimes additive effect, they don't anticipate that. Mm -hmm. So that will undo them. So they do 
do a thorough screening they do that's it that's the first strategy second strategy they will try to do drying and all those things in recent times with the volumes are bigger it's difficult mainly they depend upon mycotoxin uh, binders and mycotoxin in the latest one which is come up very nicely and doing a extremely good job is mycotoxin deactivators it's a slightly and uh, the next level of concept not only just binding it's also doing the deactivation or biotransformations of the toxic metabolites into non toxic substances that's uh, come into the play and by employing so um, you are um, getting a good uh, uh, insurance for the ports mm-hmm. of course so certain extent once the damage has been done to or uh, to protect it people are using liver protectants but that's not the safety net the safety net is the usage of good products proven scientifically with uh, uh, the clear scientific data and these thing that is the one i would say that um, customers should go for it and that's one of the good strategy in recent times to mitigate the mycotoxin effects yes and do you think that we are doing enough in this aspect uh i would say um probably uh, no no still they are producers um are try as i mentioned earlier trying to look at it uh, from the perspective uh, that it, um, they are always nutritionists for example trying to look at the individual levels of the mycotoxins permissible levels and trying to say okay i am good with that because individually i am uh, only these are all the levels of that one but later on when they are going into the production systems they are realizing still they are having a problem second thing they are going with uh, thinking that all the mycotoxin uh, elevating substances are bind as or the or the same deactivates are the same not necessarily there are lot of difference between product a to product b in terms of efficacy in terms of uh, deactivating things one could be good for aflatoxin and may not be good for xerolinon or t2 mm. which are the toughest one so producers sometimes look for the 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 costing of the product and trying to choose a, a mycotoxin uh, elevating substances sometimes they fail them this mm. is where the critical thing comes and uh, i believe that they have to choose the right product which uh, with this good uh, proven efficacy to do that in in that aspect i say we have to lot to go now the awareness has started exactly and if we're talking about uh, coccidiosis uh, do you see that it's still a major burden in the modern poultry production despite the coccidiosis control programs to certain extent i see still it is a challenge in the sense uh, if you are going to look at the um, molecules if you are going to look at the availability of molecules not many molecules have come in the recent past especially anticoxidial or uh, products so the resistance has developed immensely and the producers are often forced to switch very frequently not even completing one cycle sometimes forced to switch it because of uh, the these kind of resistances mm-hmm. so now uh, even they do rotations even they do shuttling programs still the cost of subclinical coccidiosis is very high because it's often complicated with the secondary complication necrotic enteritis which is caused by clostridium so now the even though the birds don't die still the, there would be a production if cr compromise is happening and uh, i am seeing people uh, producers are still struggling some of them are struggling so that would be a challenge for the coming days because no new molecules in the coming in the site nothing has come in the recent past with the existing molecule and the number of uh, the population of uh, poultry is keep increasing the pressure on the molecules to perform is also increasing so i see uh, even in uh, the, even though the varying parts of the world 
uh, one thing which often times the broiler producers are little uh, um, concerned is uh, coccidiosis and the coccidiosis plus uh, necrotic enteritis the combination is the one thing majorly unsettling especially the broiler industry mm. yeah exactly and so what are some such strategies that producers are using to mitigate on coxy challenges yeah um, of course uh, judicial usage of the programs and the molecule is the first one mm -hmm. they are very very closely monitoring uh, the first one is that quality of the molecule sometimes they might be using good product but if the quality is not up to the uh, good standards they still fail it so i some of the producers good producers i i have seen they always use the good branded um, proven products uh, to get the better efficacy. Second one is that uh, good knowledge about the rotation and shuttling. Mm. So that's a very, very critical, not randomly using some products or not using only one particular combination saying it is working quite good for longer period. They, they are not doing it. They are, even though they are doing it good, they take their decision and and they are doing go for rotation after three months or four months, one cycle. Third one is they take the decision not based upon only the molecules, but also based upon the lesion scorings. Lesion scoring is one method of judging how is your antioxidant performance is happening by looking at doing the lesion scoring on the birds, taking a judged decision whether your product is still working or not working. That's the third one. And uh, these methods, they are doing it, but the latest thing which is uh, happening around the parts of uh, the world, some of them, is um, we are seeing an increased amount of uh, a kind of a beneficial effects of the phytochemicals or probiotics or uh, these, these kind of combinations with essential oils. They do a good protection against uh, not only uh, the bacterial uh, thing, necrotic enteritis, but as well as uh, not only they are not good at, uh, in general against uh, enteric pathogens, they offer a good uh, amount of uh, protection for the coccidiosis as well. So when they are using that in synergy with these products, existing molecules, and as a mechanism uh, to keep it under control even though there are troubles but even then they are not going to affect it when they are going to use this one. I have seen increased amount of awareness has come especially uh, when people are using these uh, phytochemicals. Um, there is a greater uh, levels of awareness is coming up in recent times. I am seeing producers are using this um, as an another tool to control coccidiosis and uh, uh, NE in the later stages of time. Exactly. Do you have a concrete example, maybe? Earlier, uh, the concept of uh, uh, probiotics or the phytochemicals was an on and off uh, thing in the producers. When the prices are good, uh, things are nice, they are used to do it. When it's not good, they think, okay, it's not a a good thing, uh, I mean, it, it's not a necessary one, they used to remove it. But in recent times, uh, people have realized it. No, that's not working. When I'm going to remove that, I, it's uh, going to be uh, trouble. And I'm not getting the same performances as well. I'm not seeing the good carcass uh, quality. I'm not finding the drip losses while transportations are more. So they have now it is a part of a, a complete program or a necessary molecule to be into the uh, formulations and they are doing it. That's what, uh, and that's the uh, reason I would say that it's a good one, uh, they are using it. Exactly. What would be your main takeaway for uh, poultry producers around the world? And the mycotoxin and the coccidiosis uh, thing, um, uh, sometimes they are interlinked, okay. As I mentioned earlier, uh, subclinical levels are not uh, a guaranteed ones that you will be getting it better. Even though there are levels of 
subclinical levels, but their additive effects and synergy effects really pull down the performances. I, I urge the producer should not underestimate those these things. Number two, just binders. Uh, it's not going to help you. You have to think on the, the better methods of like biotransformations or deactivations kind of thing which has come up and which is really proving also to consider that and really apply it to their this uh, bank of uh, uh, the portfolios of the product inclusion. Third one is that uh, in uh, co coccidiosis control, um, Take that um, would like to take a judged decisions by doing the lesion scoring and go for it, and don't underestimate the the uh, the subclinical levels which is going to cost you your productions, and uh, the mitigation strategies. The latest one which has been uh, proving very nicely is the phytochemicals or phytobiotics or the kind of a probiotics things. Really, I would urge to take note of it and use the benefit of it and get best out of it. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time. It was lovely having you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching Future Feed Talks. If you want to see more episodes or listen to our podcast, click on the links below.